This morning, something no former president has ever done. Donald Trump will sit for a pre-sentencing interview with his probation officer. This interview will be part of the report the probation department will submit to Judge Juan Mershon ahead of Trump's sentencing on July 11th. And for normal defendants, it could be a significant factor in determining whether there will be prison time. Of course, Donald Trump is not a normal defendant. With us now, CNN Chief Law Enforcement and Intelligence Analyst John Miller. John, we got some new information about how this will be similar and different to other meetings like this. So the normal process is that the probation officer sits with the defendant, and in some cases, in this case, the defendant's lawyer, and they go through a tick list. It's, uh, what is your home situation? Do you live in a stable environment? Do you have employment? Can you get employment? Are you suffering from any drug addiction? What is your criminal background? Is it violent? Um, in this case, Donald Trump is going to be different from a lot of defendants, in fact, the vast majority. Uh, he lives in a triplex at the top of a building with his name on it. He has no criminal record. And yet, like many other defendants, he does have multiple other open felony cases. Uh, but as far as employment, drugs, and so on, uh, the question that they're trying to resolve at the probation department is a couple of things. But key to it is, is he a good candidate for the community corrections environment? In English, that means the prison correction environment or being on probation without going to jail, but having to accept the conditions of probation. Now, a lawyer present and by Zoom. This will not be in person, and Todd Blanche will be there with Donald Trump. How unusual is that? For, you know, is that what Joe Schmo defendant normally gets? Uh, Joe Schmo defendant usually comes down to see the probation officer. The probation officer wants to get a look at him or her, get a sense of that. But during COVID, the system had to keep going. So virtual probation interviews became a thing, and this makes sense because he's in another city. You said probation here. What would probation exactly mean for Donald Trump? So probation is... If you are convicted of a crime and they say, we're not going to incarcerate you, but we need to check up on you to make sure you're not going to reoffend or you're not reoffending. Parole is when you go to jail and they let you out early and they check on you after the fact. So this is an interesting thing. You know, the Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg, went to a lot of trouble to bring this case and to get this conviction. And he said in his controversial day one memo, that he wants less people to go to jail, especially in nonviolent crimes. But he did single out white collar crimes. So we don't know what they're going to ask for. And then very finally, John, this meeting will happen today. Will we hear what comes out of it or how will we know what comes out of it? So technically we shouldn't hear what comes out of it. The, the, the PSR or the pre-sentencing report goes from the New York City Department of Probation to that state Supreme Court judge, Juan Mershon, and it is to help him as he decides on the sentence, whether it's in jail or prison or whether it's on probation, uh, what those conditions should be. If it's probation, Donald Trump will probably have to check in with a probation officer once a month, sometimes once a week. He sounds more like a once a month candidate and make sure he doesn't get arrested again and stays out of trouble. John Miller in education, as always. Thanks so much for being here. This Small morning. civics lesson. It really is. No, I mean, all this stuff is new to me. Donald Trump will learn a lot about it today, no doubt. It's good that you don't know about it. I appreciate that. <laughs> so far, yet. Donald Trump is scheduled to meet virtually with a probation officer for a pre-sentencing interview. As Judge Juan Mershon weighs the punishment for the former president's historic hush money conviction. In an effort to prepare a pre-sentence report, the probation officer is likely to ask Trump about his conviction, his employment, and his criminal history. He could even interview family members and friends before next month's sentencing. The Trump campaign assuring everyone in a statement, quote, President Trump and his legal team are already taking necessary steps to challenge and defeat the lawless Manhattan DA case. My panel is back. Jonah Goldberg, I think I'm a little bit still kind of like, wow, I'm really reading a script that says all these things here in the year of our Lord, 2024. Yeah, all I can think of is, uh the Seinfeld where George Costanza wants to keep his girlfriend in prison because it's much easier relationship wise where he knows where she is all the time and he just keeps call telling the probation <laughs> officer yeah she keeps talking about getting back to her schemes with the gang you know <laughs> just I don't know you can tell it 
You can see how some of the people in Trump's orbit might talk to the probation officer in ways that are not convenient to Trump. But yeah, it's a very strange place. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if our, our production team can dig that up. We can, <laughs> we can play it on the way out of this block. Uh, but, I, I mean, for in, in reality, I mean, this is, we're starting to see some of the earliest signs of how this is going to affect things or not. There's a new uh, CBS YouGov poll. Uh, our official, you know, CNN parlance is that this is too close. It doesn't, you know, show anything one way or the other. But if you compare it to the previous poll, there's a, like a two-point swing uh, in Joe Biden's direction. Uh, do you think that that is significant, not significant? I think, well, we got 146 days or something until the election. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of this stuff is just going to become fuzzy memories baked in. I think, and I actually don't think the fact that he's a felon um, is the thing that's moving the polls to the extent that they are. I think it's just the reminder of the chaos that he brings, and this is one more example of it that is problematic for people. If the election's a referendum on Donald Trump, the polling suggests Joe Biden wins. If the election's a referendum on Joe Biden, the polling suggests Donald Trump wins. It's very hard for things not to seem like a referendum on Donald Trump when he's meeting with his probation officer. I mean, I think this is a sign, though, of how weak President Biden is, that with all of the problems that we're seeing with Donald Trump, I mean, he is a convicted felon. I mean, there was just a hush money trial about porn stars and all these things, every time he speaks, you're just hearing over and over again these same talking points and, and this destructive language, and yet the polls are so close. And so I think that really does speak to President Biden's weakness. And I think what we're seeing is that people are not adverse to the message of the Democrats. They don't like the messenger, and that's President Biden. Yeah, I, I'm, in, I'm impressed that last time the two of you were sitting here next to each other, I think it was a little sparkier, but John is not <laughs> in the middle. No, 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 no. This is the first time since 2016 where we have two candidates so unpopular, each of them has a chance to lose to the other. Uh, so, uh, Elena, um, we heard from Trump over the weekend at this Vegas uh, rally, um, and of course the next sort of looming legal issue for Trump is going to be uh, his Supreme Court case. They've got to decide whether he's immune in the, the January 6th prosecution. Uh, so here's what he had to say, uh, Trump had to say, about Jack Smith, the special counsel uh, overseeing that probe at this rally watch. What they've done is they've weaponized the Department of Justice. The only thing they didn't understand is that we just had the largest fundraising effort in a period of one week than anybody has ever had. I did nothing. You know, we have a deranged individual named Jack Smith. He's a deranged, a dumb guy. He's a dumb son of a So that's where we are with Trump uh, and Jack Smith. Uh, what, is, what is your reporting? I know, I know you talked to members of Congress, et cetera. What do they say to you about how much the January 6th case might make a difference with voters as compared to what we've seen with the Manhattan case? I haven't heard anything from members of Congress or aides that they expect it to make, you know, a huge difference necessarily. But I think, you know, listening to the clip of that rally just confirms how when Trump went to Vegas, his, you know, sort of isolated efforts to appeal to possibly persuadable voters feel so um, so out of place in a way. I, I don't know if y'all remember, but when he was down there, he was trying to appeal to the culinary union mm -hmm. um, to say, you know, I, once I'm president, I will get rid of taxes on tips and whatnot. And the culinary union immediately fires back with a statement, this is a fan, like, you, you know, we take real candidates seriously, not false promises. Um, but just even trying to kind of put forth and advertise a policy proposal feels so out of place now with the Trump who you see on stage 97% of the time. We should also say the Culinary Union is a hugely Democratic organization that campaigns for Democrats in the state. But Nevada is so interesting because, Nevada of course, is, is because it's got yeah. Latinos, it, you know, he's trying to appeal to that demographic. We've seen a swing uh, towards Trump from Latinos, especially working class Latinos. And so, you know, the message, I know it sounds... Um, uh, frankly, a little ridiculous coming from him because he doesn't deal in policy. He deals in emotions. And yet, I mean, I think he is finding a more, more fertile ground, even when it's just a small little snippet in a longer speech. I will say, when I talk to sources about what's going on in Nevada, I think that they would not be surprised if Trump wins Nevada Absolutely. Uh, yeah. in yeah. the fall.